Hi, this is Eric White. In this screencast, I'm going to introduce the Text Replacer class that I've recently written for Power Tools for OpenXML. This code is really rather similar to code that I wrote recently that searched and replaced text in word processing ML documents. However, that code that I wrote recently used XML document and I am gradually getting rid of all of the code that uses XML document in Power Tools for OpenXML. I'd rather have that code be written using pure functional transforms and linked XML. I used basically the same algorithm. This screencast serves two purposes. First of all, it will explain the code that is in Power Tools for OpenXML in detail so that if you need to duplicate the algorithm in some other language, it should be clear about how to do that. Second of all, it's kind of interesting to compare the XML document approach to the linked XML pure functional transform approach. It's kind of a study in comparison of the two styles of coding, which I find interesting. I'll be comparing and contrasting the two styles of coding here, and I'm going to use a very simple test to demonstrate the search and replace algorithm. Here we have a small document. It has one small sentence in it. Now we go and the we is bolded. The search and replace is going to replace the we with you. Now let me show you the behavior of word when you replace we with you. I am going to type control H and I'm going to replace we with you. And what you can see is that the entire word you is bolded. The algorithm that word uses when searching and replacing text is that it takes the format of the first character of the matched search string and applies that format to the entire replacement string. In the original document that had now we go and we was bolded, the W, which was the first character of the search string that was matched, was bolded. Therefore, the entire word U is bolded. I'll undo that change and close this document. Let's look at the XML document code first. The XML document code finds a paragraph that contains the search string. It finds the paragraph either if the paragraph contains the search string or if match case is set to false then it does a case insensitive comparison to determine whether a paragraph contains the search string. Once it determines whether the paragraph contains the search string then the code iterates through all the runs and it replaces all of the runs that contain text elements with multiple runs, each run containing a single character. Here I have output the paragraph to the console and then exited the application. So if I run it, we see all of the text in that small document has been split into runs, each of a single character. Now let's look at text replacer. Here's the code that replaces all of the runs that contain text elements with multiple runs, each run containing a single character. And when we run this, we see, as with the XML document code, that all of the runs have been replaced by multiple runs, each run having a single character. One point about the linked XML code that is in Text Replacer is that this code uses a pure functional recursive transform. What you can see here is that when it finds a paragraph element and that paragraph element contains the search string, then it runs that paragraph through this recursive transform 
where it clones the paragraph element and runs all of the child nodes of that paragraph element back through search and replace transform. And if we drop down here, when the recursive transform sees a run element that has some text elements, then here it actually transforms that run into a collection of runs, each run containing a single character. So this code isn't really appreciably shorter than the XML document code. It's a little bit shorter, but not a whole lot shorter. In the near future, I am going to be recording a series of screencasts on doing recursive pure functional transforms. This is the most effective way to transform XML documents, in my opinion. There are multiple ways to do transforms. You can use XSLT. You can simply go into the XML tree and start replacing nodes and so on. That is transforming the tree, although in a tree modification approach. Or you can do recursive transforms. I personally think that the recursive transform approach yields the most elegant and maintainable code, but it takes a bit of a learning curve to come up to speed with recursive transforms. Just a side note is that these recursive transforms really are very parallel in nature to the correct way of writing XSLT transforms where you use XSLT in the style of a pure functional language. So now I'm going back here to the search and replace code that uses XML document. And the next chunk of code here is pretty straightforward code that iterates through all of the runs in the paragraph and searches for a string of runs that match the search string. And when it finds a string of runs that match the search string, this code, first of all, creates a new run that contains the properties of the first character in the string that matched the search string. Then this code goes into the tree and it inserts that new run and removes all of the runs that contain a single character. This is pretty ordinary code that goes into an XML tree using XML document and finds particular nodes and inserts nodes and deletes nodes and so on and so forth. I'll add the bit of code here that dumps out the paragraph to the console. I'll run this code. And now we can see that the runs that match the search string, in other words, the WE, have been replaced by a new run that contains the formatting of the W, which is that that character was bolded, and the run contains the entire text of the replacement. These runs above and below are untouched. They are runs that contain a single character. Let's go into text replacer and dump out the paragraph with replaced runs. And we see the identical markup when we dump out this markup after finding the search string and replacing the search string with a new run that contains the replacement text. One of the things that's interesting about this code here is that I, after a fair number of experiments, decided to write this code as locally impure code as it was the most expressive way to write it. I went down the path of writing pure functional code and it got rather convoluted. The way this code works is that before it goes through and replaces those runs that contain single characters with the replacement run, is that it first iterates through the entire paragraph looking for strings that match the search string 
And when it finds those strings that match the search string, it adds an annotation onto those elements. And that annotation contains a match ID. And what this allows for is this allows for the correct functionality when there are two search strings that are matched in the document that are immediately adjacent to each other. That it finds the first search string, that gets one particular match ID. It finds the second search string, that gets another match ID. And then when the code replaces the search strings, it replaces each sequence with the replacement string. Finally, in the XML document code, here is the code that finds adjacent runs that have only text elements and have identical formatting and coalesce those single character runs that have identical formatting back into a consolidated run that has multiple characters in the run. It isn't technically necessary to do that in order to have a valid OpenXML document. It certainly is a valid document having all of those runs, each having a single character. However, that's just a bit messy. It makes the resulting document larger than it needs to be. It makes good sense to have a bit of code here that consolidates all of those runs that have a single character and that are adjacent and that have the same formatting into a consolidated run. And now if I insert some code to dump the paragraph to the console, then we see there are now three runs in the paragraph. The first run contains the text now. The second run contains the replacement string that is bolded. And the third run contains space followed by go. And that's the final run in the paragraph. I'll insert the bit of code here in the linked XML version and run it. And we see exactly the same thing. So now we can run the search and replace code, look at the resulting modified document, and it contains now you go as expected. And if we run the text replacer, and we see the exact same thing. So these two chunks of code have identical behavior. It's just that one's written in XML document and the other's written using linked XML in a pure functional transformational style. It took me about eight hours to write the XML document code. It took about three and a half hours to write the pure functional transformational code. That certainly could be attributed to the fact that I am most comfortable writing the functional code rather than XML document. In any case, it was a little bit faster to code the pure functional version of this. That's enough for this screencast. Thanks for watching.